Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, this is the headlines. Uh, and this is actually a new uh, segment that I want to introduce. Uh, so remember that uh, we uh, DPA do, used to do some uh, headlines, uh, Asian headlines, European headlines, and uh, we have stopped it for a month because I was too busy. So, uh, but one of this I want to actually cover is the food and energy crisis and particularly is a, as a result due to the anti-Russia uh, actions uh, by the Western uh, atmosphere or, or basically US, NATO, EU, you know, Australia, Japan, South Korea, basically the West uh, collective uh, against Russia and this is actually resulting in a severe energy and food crisis all around the world and it's and it is only going to get worse and i believe that uh maybe it's a good idea to just cover it so uh so to cover it uh, because there's so many news right so the best way to cover it is through the headlines segment so now we have this headline segments is part of this entire you know dpa headlines which we have a lot you know if i actually enable uh, there's there's a lot of icons uh, basically i still enable the main one uh, because uh, i haven't covered uh, since mid May. So anyway, um, so let's get started. So the so we go on to something that is a bit dated. Uh, on the twenty um, one month ago, Russia have cut off the gas supply to Finland because Finland refused to pay in rubles. So, but it's not very important to Finland uh, because they only you know consume ten percent uh from this uh, Russian supply then on 17th of june basically um last week uh this is where you know things start to get a bit uh tricky so gasprom have uh cut gas supply to Nord stream one by 60 percent so at first they cut up they cut uh the gas supply by 40 percent to germany uh and then they a day, a day later they upgraded it to 60 percent so they guess from cited that this is a technical problem because uh because due to the canada uh canadian sanctions uh by canada over the war in ukraine the siemens siemens energy the german company is unable to deliver the equipments uh that was sent uh by Gazprom to siemens for repair and overhaul so the things basically stuck in canada and However, the German com uh, government is not happy, you know, with this reasoning. They say that the maintenance uh, shouldn't have been an issue until autumn, and this the Russian uh, decision to cut the gas supply, or actually, you know, reduce the gas supply, uh, not exactly a cut, um, is a political gamble, so that they can uh, push up the prices and so uncertainty. And this does not only uh, hit Germany because it also hits Italy. So the gas flow to Italy is reduced by 50%. So they first had a 15% uh, reduction and then uh, it, it was increased to 50%. It was the same uh, excuse, technical reasons. So, but Italy actually uh, suffers more because uh, the the country uh, requires 70% of its gas demands uh, through Gazprom and it has a bigger energy mix uh, in terms of this gas because it uh, it accounts for 41% of the Italian uh, energy mix whereas uh, in Germany gas only uh, accounts for 27% so Italy actually dem uh, requires Russian gas more so they are very uh, disturbed you know by this uh development so this also hits france so the french uh gas transmission system operator the grt gas uh had a reported on june 17 on the very same day that the gas flow from germany to france had ceased two days earlier so um, I'm not sure you know, how the this gas supply is actually operated, you know, because it goes through Germany and uh, it actually goes to zero for France. I wonder if this division is by Russia or is it by Germany? So anyway, 
uh, France is you no know, very not so exposed, you know, because uh, it only takes seventy percent of his gas supply from Gazprom, and uh, even that uh, gas is only contributing sixteen percent of the entire French energy mix. Uh, but this is put still you know concerning for Macron uh, because uh, there is continuing uh, pre problems with their nuclear power, power plants. I believe I have covered this before uh, last month when we are still doing the headlines. So uh, it is a surprise to me uh, that you no know, France got zero now from Russia. And it also hit Slovakia. So Slo for Slovakia, uh, I think the situation is probably the worst. 50% um, of the gas supply is cut. And uh, of course, it's of course it's the same uh, technical reason. And this is very bad for Slovakia because the Slovakia actually received 85% of its gas from Russia. They are now trying to you know, strike a deal with Norway to receive gas from the North Sea through Germany as well as liquefied gas from other countries so that they can reduce their dependence on Russian gas by 65%. Uh, but until all these things are done, uh, they are still dependent on Russia. And uh, of course, they are all collectively getting hit by uh, Russia's uh, very subtle counter sanction. So that's... And it is not exactly an excuse because uh, Siemens actually confirmed that the Canadian sanctions actually resulted uh, in the failure to return the repaired turbines to Gazprom. So the German engineering group confirmed uh, to Reuters that they are unable to do, do this, this referring to returning the turbines due to Canadian sanctions. So the turbines is actually uh, some of kind of a weakness for the Russia's energy system because it actually relies on uh, foreign equipment and services. Uh, of and but you no know, Germany is you no know, still feels that this is a uh, politically uh, motivated. And on in the other news, uh, Russia has become the biggest oil supplier, uh, overtaking Saudi Arabia. So, um, like you no know, most of the Asian countries, you know, has been you now. Uh, like China, like India, they are they are importing a lot of Russian oil because of the low price. So the discount is rather severe, is quite a lot. I think it's like maybe to thirty percent. So they the China have actually uh Im imported uh two point zero two million barrels per day in May, uh up from one point three one million in April. But that's actually a lot, uh a huge increase, and um. Uh, in China, Saudi Arabia uh, import actually uh, dropped. You no, know, the import of Saudi Arabian uh, oil have dropped from one hundred eighty-eight million barrels per day uh, in May, uh, dropped by a uh, twelve point five percent from the two point one five million in April. So they are losing market share in uh, China to Russia, UAE, and Oman. So you no, know, there is this a uh, huge. Uh, changing and turning of uh, this ba geopolitical balance in, uh, all around the world now uh, very scary so so far uh, in terms of gas returning to gas i think i've mixed up a bit so returning to gas uh, russia have so far cut gas off from bulgaria denmark finland poland and netherlands so and more disruption is now expected to come because um uh, there is going to be a uh, maintenance uh it's an annual maintenance for third stream which will be happening on june 21st uh, which is uh yesterday and all the way to the 28th uh so the entire third stream uh will be down so this third stream actually supply gas to southern europe so there will be no gas for one week because of this maintenance of third stream and likewise, uh, Nord Stream 1, uh, the one that have cut gas to Germany, will also be down for one week at the end of July. So that will be next month. Also for the annual scheduled maintenance. So so this actually happens every year. Uh, this is really like scheduled. Uh, but 
is coming at a time where you no know, things are you know very tense and tricky. So as a result of all these uh gas situation, you know, uh, Germany, Italy, Austria, and Netherlands is now going to reopen their gas fired plant. So they're going to start using coal again after all the talk about you know going green and uh you know this closing down all the coal plant coal power plant gas power plant you know and all this nonsense you no know. now uh, they're going to reopen the most dirty energy coal 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 power plants uh because they have to compensate for the cut in russian gas supplies so the German economy, uh, economy uh, minister, Robert Habeck, uh, described the government decision to limit the use of natural gas and burn more coal as a bitter one, but they must do everything they can to store as much gas as possible ahead of winter. So currently, most of the European countries are around 50 over percent in terms of their storage. They are still far away from the 80 percent mandate uh, required to uh, prepare for winter. 80 or 90 percent something like this so uh quite bad so uh as and also in tandem uh sweden and denmark seeing all these things developing uh declares early warning over gas supplies uh fear so in europe they have this uh system that allow member states to flag up uh, impending energy supply difficulties so they have early warning alert and then emergency so they are now going to early warning so uh, but the Swedish uh, energy agency also note that supply of uh, gas in Sweden is actually still robust and stockpile in Sweden and Denmark uh, is well stocked ahead of the autumn. So they are just you know, uh, adding fuel to the, to the fire to make everyone panic even more. So that's all about gas and oil. Um, coming to food crisis, the EU uh says that the globe the looming global food crisis is nothing to do with eu uh, there's nothing to do with their sanctions on russia so the european union top diplomat uh have uh, i think is joseph borrell have written to all the african foreign ministers to explain that the bloc sanction on russia is not responsible for the looming global food crisis and they say they will pledge to work out ways to export food and fertilizers to reach their continent. And I think this is bullshit. I don't think they care. They, they just want to you know make, I believe they're going to make uh, more suffering to happen in this world so that you know they can blame Russia even more, so to demonize Russia more. Uh, I don't think they are sincere. Because if they're sincere, they will have already solved the problem by now. So the EU say that they have not banned the export of Russian food and fertilizers to non-EU nations. So that's why it's not their fault. That's how they think. And they say that instead it's Ru because of Russia blockading Ukrainian export. They say Russia destroying ports, food, food stock and destroy transport infrastructure. So it's Russia's fault. But what does the African Union say? The African Union say that the problem is not that. The problem is they want to pay for the imported cereal and fertilizers from Russia. However, they cannot pay because EU sanctioned Russian banks from the international payment system. So according to the Senegalese president, Macky Sall, who is currently the chair of the African Union, he say, we want to pay, but it is becoming impossible. So we asked the European for the same mechanism for, uh, as for gas and oil because the while the the rush uh the eu did not sanction uh the export of russian uh cereal or fertilizer or basically wheat uh to non-eu countries but because they have excluded russian several russian banks including Spurbank, from the international international payment system the swift this eu rule is making uh payment rather impossible and so now you know, other people are, are hoping that they are able to make payment you know, to Russia uh, in a way how they have arranged for gas import. So this is actually the reality. It's not about the export ban. It's actually about 
the payment system. And uh, Turkey, looking at all this uh, situation growing, uh, is deciding to you know, take advantage. So Turkey now wants a Black Sea grain corridor with Russia so that they can export U Ukrainian grain. So they will be sending a military delegation uh, to Russia to discuss the detail of a possible corridor in the Black Sea for Ukrainian grain export. And they will also host a four-way summit uh, with the participation of the UN, Ukraine, Russia, and themselves. So, so they say that this uh, transportation of uh, Russian food products through the corridor should also be created with uh, cooperation of Ukraine. So this agenda to open three corridors uh, through four ports in Odessa and then to sell food uh, produced at a 25% discount to Turkey. So that's the plan, you see. They want the food to be sold at a 25% discount to Turkey. Uh, but of course, they, then they say that 30 to 35 tons of food will be extracted from the corridor uh, to be created in eight months. So a uh, very good plan by the Turkish to get discounted food uh, amidst the you know, desperation of Ukraine to actually export something. And of course, because of the looming food crisis, the UN will definitely you know is happy to do something to at least elevate uh, the possible food crisis that's about to hit the entire world. And this food crisis is not going to spare anyone as the US government is now secretly pushing companies to buy more and supply more Russian fertilizer. So because the EU and US have uh, built exemptions uh, in the restriction to doing business with Russia, so to allow you know, the trade of fertilizer, uh, which you know, Russia is one of the key global supplier. The, the problem with this is that despite they have this exemption uh, it, within all the sanctions, many of the shippers, banks and uh, insurers have stayed away from the trade, from trading you know, fertilizers because they are worried that they will accidentally uh, break the rules. So no one want, dares to touch the fertilizer export. As a result, uh, this year this year's Russian fertilizer export has dropped by 24%. And the US officials are no surprise uh, by the extent of the caution by all these uh, companies. So now they are now in this very uh, paradoxical position, uh, they're in this uh, weird position where they have to find ways to help to do marketing for Russia. They have to do sales for Russia. And uh, it despite their own sanctions. So, th so that's a very weird situation now. So Washington is sending representative to UN-led talks in uh, Russia, in Moscow, earlier this month to talk about this issue. And uh, the content of the discussion was uh, secret. It's not public. So um, it's warned in this article by the Bloomberg that inadequate fertilizer deliveries this year will also affect ne next year's crops. So this food crisis is not going to be just this year. It might, it might drag on to the entire of next year. And uh, things is indeed you know, looking rather bad because Pakistan finally admits that they have a shortage of fertilizer in their country. So the Minister, Minister of Commerce admitted there's a shortage of fertilizer due to the war in Ukraine. And then now they are trying to import uh, from China to fulfill their domestic demand, which is a uh, sort of weird uh, because China themselves uh, might also need it. So not sure how much they are paying to get China to export it. And um, so the minister also asked provincial governments to provide the fertilizers to farmers through local, uh, locally available stocks. Meanwhile, uh, waiting for imported commodities to arrive through the cargoes. And then uh, it looks like the situation is actually rather bad, you know, because the their Minister for Economic Affairs actually uh, informed the House that the government is going to install trackers on trucks that are supplying various commodities such as fertilizer and wheat and then to ensure dual fencing of each urea bag, uh, which is the fertilizer, to prevent uh, hoarding and smuggling, which means that hoarding and smuggling is already happening in Pakistan, which is why now they are reacting uh, to install trackers on all these uh, trucks 
to make sure that uh, there is no uh, evil people making things worse uh, in the in Pakistan. So and and this ex fertilizer situation is really also uh, giving Russia slightly a bit of a headache because uh, no one dares to trade uh, uh, for you know, fertilizers using their own national currencies. Maybe because the financial system now is very fragile and then maybe you know, they don't want Russian rubles. And Russia, the Russians also not sure what they, 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 need, they want to do with the Latin American currency. So now they are now discussing uh, butter trading. So, so Russia is you not know, going to butter trade their mineral fertilizers with uh, Latin American countries since no one wants to pay in national currencies. So, however, there is a number of problems with the export of Russian fertilizers. The first thing is charters. Very limited numbers of shippers are preparing, are prepared to enter Russian ports and, uh, and then to ship all these fertilizers around the world. So main, the main shippers today are Greece and Turkey. And then not on top of that, charter prices have doubled. So this actually increased the price of fertilizer, uh, making fertilizer really expensive. And it might be, you know, uh, very difficult for the, the farmers to actually pay for it and actually to even make profit, which means they have to raise the price of uh, their, the food harvest next year or when it harvests which means food prices will increase and then poorer countries will not be able to buy food because they wouldn't have the kind of money to buy it. So food crisis will continue to get worsened. And they say that the same thing is happening with the insurance company. The insurance company are refusing to insure and they are making a bunch of demands. And then the next problem is payment. So they say that even the buyers paid for the goods, it doesn't mean that the, mon the money arrived. So payment is a problem as well. Just like, you know, the, I, I think the, I think Bulgaria made payment for gas, but because the payment is not in the correct currency, they don't get the gas. So payment is a problem as well in today's age. So they, uh, Russia exports 10 million tons of fertilizer to Brazil uh, annually. And uh, his company actually account for 1.6 million ton of it. So this guy is the CEO, I think. Um, no, he's the head of marketing you know, and development of Force Agro, which is a Russian company. I've checked. So this this is actually from the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. Uh, so this is the entire news headlines uh, so far for the anti-Russia energy and food crisis uh, series of the headlines. Uh, I hope this is uh, interesting and meaningful to you. And let me know in the comments if you want me to continue to cover this um, or you think it's very boring and you don't want to watch. And then probably, uh, you probably wouldn't hear me say, saying all these things uh, uh, these things now So because you will have quit. So anyway, um, I will try to cover this maybe every week or every other week, maybe once every two weeks. So to keep track of you know, the situation uh, surrounding the Ukraine war uh, that is affecting the energy and food uh, situation all around the world. And I'll see you in the next update.